All right. So thanks, everyone, for attending. I'm Abram Douglas. I'm a solutions architect who I specialize in identity. And today we are going to be talking through managing customer identities. We'll be talking through Amazon Cognito and hitting on some of the challenges around customer identity. And we'll actually walk through some use cases and how Cognito can solve some of those challenges. So yeah, here's our agenda. We're going to keep it real crisp. We're going to have a quick overview of some of the challenges and how those challenges can be um, overcome with Amazon Cognito. We're going to spend the majority of our time on the use cases and walking through the various use cases. And I do have some takeaways for call of actions to just um, learn more and then continue your customer identity journey. So what are some of the customer identity challenges? For one, implementing identity can be challenging in itself. Typically, you want to provide more options to your customers to sign in. And so the more options you do provide, that does introduce complexity. Identity standards can take some time and be difficult to master. So these are things that you typically do not want to spend time and resources on. And we are at Reinforce, right? So security should be top of mind, and we want to make sure that we can stay ahead of the ever-growing threat landscape. So what's the solution? Amazon Cognito. It is a developer-centric and security-focused customer identity and access management service. It can provide you all the user sign-up, sign-in for your web and mobile applications. So we like to call this offloading the undifferentiated heavy lifting. So again, don't spend time and resources on building customer identity, but instead leverage something like Amazon Cognito to provide that for your applications. Talking about choice. Again, if you want to provide choice for your customers to sign in and sign up, you want to make sure that you can do that seamlessly. You don't want to spend time and energy understanding how to integrate with various different identity providers, whether those be SAML-based, OpenID Connect, or even social identity providers. Cognito is a standards-based uh, solution, so you don't, again, have to spend time in becoming an expert in these, in these standards. And again, Security, right? So with Amazon Cognito, you can now, as a service, you can have things like adaptive authentication that can adapt to risk based on uh, the, the risk factors and then determine whether or not MFA prompt should happen or not for that user. You have things like a compromised credential check, so you can actually ensure that your customers are not using known publicly leaked compromised credentials, so you can provide that as well. And then there's some additional logging uh, that's available as well with, with Amazon Cognito. So let's go through some use cases. There's four primary use cases that Amazon Cognito does help you with. One is that BDC, that business to customer. So if you do need to provide a capability for your end-facing end customers to actually sign up and sign into your services, Cognito can help with that. If you have a SaaS or multi-tenant solution and you need enterprises to log in, Amazon Cognito can help that with federation. Amazon Cognito also is OAuth 2 compliant? So if you're needing that machine-to-machine -machine or service-to-service -service authentication, you can actually utilize OAuth 2 client credential grant to handle your machine-to-machine -machine authentication. And that fourth use case is a, what we call our credential broker. So if you do need the ability to exchange credentials for temporary AWS credentials, Amazon Cognito can actually help you do that. And we're going to go through each one of these use cases in a little more detail. So for that business to customer use case, you typically, on the screen here, we have our client. And our first step is the user needs to sign up or sign in to your application. So this is where Amazon Cognito can centralize that for you. Optionally, if you wanted to provide that social identity federation, you can actually handle that and provide that to your service through Amazon Cognito. So again, instead of having to go off and learn how to directly integrate with you know, Google and with Facebook and learning those APIs, you can actually centralize that with just Amazon Cognito. If that user does sign in through a social provider, it comes back to Cognito. Cognito validates that that is a good uh, third-party authentication. And then Cognito will return a common set of credentials back to your application. So that's actually going to return some JOT tokens. So your application will get back an ID token, access token, and a refresh token. Now you know who the user is, and you have an access token to help authorize what they can do further down the stream. So in this example here, we're going to actually take that access token and present it to an API gateway. 
So this is where we can have a native integration utilizing something like a Cognito authorizer. So this way, it's a low-code, no-code solution where you can take that access token, present it to an API gateway, and ensure that that token is still valid. Ensure the signature is good, it's not tampered with, and the token is not expired. And then now they can have access to the backend resources. That second use case we want to talk through is that business-to-business -business and that SaaS multi-tenant scenario. So here we have an example where we have customer one, and say they belong to tenant number one. They're going to come in and use your application and start their authentication journey. With Amazon Cognito, that can actually serve a hosted UI that is specific to that tenant, or it can actually directly just redirect the user back to their own identity provider. So in this example, maybe it's a SAML provider. So this enterprise customer is logging into your SaaS service, but obviously you want them to log in with their own credentials from that identity provider. In this case, it's SAML. Once SAML returns that assertion back to Cognito, it validates that that is a good, valid authentication. And then, in a, in a, just as previously stated, Cognito now will return the ID, access, and refresh token back to your client. So in this example, we happen to be using AWS AppSync, maybe you have a GraphQL backend. Uh, back and again, I'm going to take that access token, present it to the GraphQL API, and now authorize that user to access the downstream services. Expanding on that, maybe we have our second tenant. Our, this is our, our customer number two, coming in from tenant number two. Utilizing that same Cognito user pool, that app client specific UI can be rendered or the user can, again, be directly redirected to their own identity provider. Just as an example here, that happens to maybe be an OpenID Connect identity provider. Once that authentication takes place, tokens are returned back to Cognito. Cognito validates that. And then Cognito will return the ID, access, and refresh token back to your client. So you can see here from a scaling perspective, your application and service only needs to integrate with Amazon Cognito. You don't need to actually now build out integrations with various identity providers, let Amazon Cognito federate all of those for you, and return a common set of ID, access, and refresh tokens back to your client. And again, using that access token for downstream services. Sort of a, uh, another third scenario here is maybe you have another enterprise customer that's a little smaller, or maybe they don't want to federate. They actually want to use this dedicated set of credentials to log into your service. You can still, su you can still support that scenario and use case where that customer would directly log into the Cognito user pool. So again, that's one single user pool can fit your application and service, scaling out to multiple enterprise customers or the user logging in directly to the Cognito user pool. It should be noted here that this, is, this type of federation does leverage, again, some common standards. So we'll have that OAuth 2 endpoints that's available. It can handle all the, your SAML uh, integration with your SAML third-party identity providers, as well as your OpenID Connect identity providers. So now onto that third use case, that machine-to-machine -machine authentication. So again, using OAuth 2 client credential grant, a app client can begin that authentication. So this is where we'll make that HTTP post call to the token endpoint of your user pool. The client ID and client secret will be provided in an authorization header to the Cognito user pool. Cognito will validate that those credentials are valid. And Cognito will return a JOT compliant access token back to the client. So in this example, we're going to go ahead and again use an API gateway. So we'll take that access token that that client has, present it to the API gateway. We can now use that native integration of that Cognito authorizer with the API gateway. Or if you need more advanced auth authentic authorization, you can utilize a Lambda authorizer with that API gateway. And again, go ahead and validate that token that's been presented. Go ahead and access the downstream resources and return that to the app client. Since this is OAuth 2 and it's standard, maybe you have some services that live outside of AWS. So again, that app client, after receiving its access tokens, can go and access a resource server. That resource server will be able to validate that that token is valid. So again, important here, right? Validate that the signature is still good on that access token. Ensure that that token is not expired. And then, of course, if you have any more fine-grained authorization, the claims within that token can actually now validate what data should be returned to that app client. For that fourth use case, 
I want to talk about the temporary AWS credentials and sort of that credential broker model. So what we see here now on the screen is really what we've talked about in the very first use case. So that user has already signed in, signed up, they receive tokens back, maybe they've accessed more downstream services through an API gateway or something like AppSync using Graph, a GraphQL API. Well, maybe you have an example where a user is needing to access data that lives in an S3 bucket. This is now where you can take that ID token, present it to an Amazon Cognito identity pool. Within that identity pool, you will have a set of IAM roles with policies that can be defined that can be assumed temporarily. So in this example here, in that step six, that ID token has been presented to your identity pool. It's been validated what role should be assumed by this authenticated user. And then now, the identity pool is going to return time-bound, temporary AWS credentials back to the client. And now that client has the ability, using APIs and SDKs, to access them, those more downstream AWS services. I think a really good example here is if you have like a photo sharing type of application, you want to make sure that the user who is signed in, you know who they are, you ensure that they have the access that they're supposed to have to your application, but if they need to update or, or excuse me, upload data or download data from an S3 bucket, this is a model here where you can now take that authenticated user, exchange it for those temporary credentials, and now access that, that AWS uh, resource as an S3 bucket as an example. So as a, as a call to action and sort of a takeaway, um, here are some other Cognito sessions that, are, that have happened. I think at this point, majorities have already happened, but it's still important to take note. Some of these have been recorded, so once those sessions are available, you can definitely go out and, and watch those sessions to, to learn more and continue your journey. And again, continuing your journey with customer identity. Here's, some, here's three resources. Uh, the first one is really some high-level Amazon Cognito service information. So this is a great place to start to really point you to documentation, point you to some sample apps to begin with, point you to some workshops that are out there. The second resource there is a full comprehensive Amazon Cognito workshop. So this is publicly available. This is a workshop that has about eight different labs in it. So using a sandbox uh, account or an environment, you can actually go through these labs and learn how to actually integrate and build your application um, along with Amazon Cognito. So whether you need the user sign up, sign in, whether you're doing machine to machine off, um, there's even a great lab on there around how to migrate customers from an existing system to Amazon Cognito today. And the last resource there is actually a recording from last year's Reinforce where Fandango actually talked through some patterns around migrating from their existing systems into Amazon Cognito. So some good lessons learned that were shared there. Um, at this point, thank you very much for your time.